So I uh, play many hats in the community. I moved here to pursue my graduate degree at the University of South Carolina. I'm a public health researcher and I'm faculty at the university. And I think public health at the very core of that is eliminating health disparities and building equity for all people. And as a child of immigrants, it was something that was particularly important to me as I was growing up to ensure that every single person, regardless of where they come from, have the same opportunities to succeed. And it was those passions and skills that I then decided to transfer into doing something crazy and running for office last year. And I'm really excited to share that I'm the first Asian American woman to be elected to city council in Columbia, South Carolina. And that's not something that I take lightly. You know, I, I believe that it is something to celebrate, but it's also something to really think about that we are in 2022 and we're still having firsts. And so I've always used my campaign and now my current platform to shed light on the fact that South Carolina is diverse. We're not just white and black. There are a lot of other great cultures, traditions, race and ethnicities represented here. And sometimes we don't get a voice at the table. And I hope that through my work, I'm able to give my community and those that may not be seen all across South Carolina that opportunity. So I, as I mentioned, I think that people are often used to a very white and black landscape of the South. But for years and for decades, people have chosen from within the AAPI community to make this their home. Whether they've immigrated straight to South Carolina or they've lived here for generations. It's also really interesting to note that most Asian business owners own their own business in South Carolina. And when you think about the impact of that in terms of our prosperity, in terms of the next generation, I think that's something to really be recognized. Um, I think that we have a unique opportunity in a time that unfortunately there is a lot of violence, there's xenophobia, there is hatred towards Asian Americans for us to help dispel those myths, to call out when there are stereotypes. I mean, I'll even share that some people were surprised that I was considered Asian American, right? There's a lot of education to be had, but I think that South Carolina has an appetite for it. They want to learn, they want to honor the rich traditions and history that we have. and. Why not take advantage of some of the current events uh, to help propel that forward? Going back to some of the conversations we've already had about some of the Asian violence that's occurred across the country and some of the dialogue that it sparked, I think it's important for South Carolinians to recognize that although the Asian American population may not be as big as other places, we are here. And the best thing you can do is just learn and educate yourself as these awful things are happening. And to my Asian American community, I hope that you take this as a opportunity to speak up and speak out when you see things that are not working for our community because South Carolina should be a place where everybody can do well. And so that's exactly some of the themes that I talked about in a recent op-ed that I uh, was fortunate to be able to publish with the Post and Courier. And whether it's May or whether it's December, I am somebody that's going to remain steadfast in my commitment to ensuring that the Asian American community is represented both on the political level, but in my work as a public health researcher and as a person. So recently um, I invited friends to celebrate uh, the Festival of Holi, which is the Festival of Colors. And uh, there were so many people that learned about that tradition for the first time. That's just one small example of the different things that I'd like to do, even in partnership with the commission, to just help people understand who we are and, and where we came from.